Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tessa Zolli. I'm a licensed esthetician. In today's video, I'm so excited by the way, we are going to be reviewing my favorite style icons skincare routine, Miss Hailey Bieber. Now, I feel like Hailey has a good routine. I have seen her post products on her social media and they're things that I like and approve of. I feel like she's also one to go get professional treatments and seek professional advice. So I'm really excited to see what she uses. Now I gotta say when I used to make these reviews I was so hypercritical. I don't mean anything by this but just coming out of SD school I think you're so focused on almost like a micro level like so focused on the ingredient deck. Now I more so know that it's more about the formula than just the ingredients and whether a product has clinical research behind it and whether it's a trusted formula later. So I'm a little bit more chill, a little bit more knowledgeable, but I'm really excited for this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Haley Road Bieber and I just woke up, but I'm going to do this video for you guys showing you my morning skincare routine, how I would prep my skin for a day of work for a photo shoot. So check it out. One of my favorite things to do when I'm getting ready for work is I will do a mask. I wouldn't do a mask every single day, obviously, but when I want a little bit of an extra glow, I go for a nice, calming, hydrating mask. So I'm gonna put this all over. Make sure it's evenly spread because I'm a little bit OCD. Hopefully this helps to wake my skin up a little bit because she's tired today. So mask is on. Okay, I really like that Haley is squeezing in her treatment products where it makes sense for her. I think most of us think you do a mask at night, but it's it's not feasible for everybody to do a mask after they've got home, done a whole nighttime routine, made dinner. So she's a busy model. Squeezing it into her morning, I think makes total sense. I mean, I like to do that too. I'll throw on a little mask in the morning because I feel like my skin is so dehydrated from a night of sleep. And sometimes, especially if I'm doing makeup that day, having a little bit of like prep treatment is really nice for helping the makeup to lay right and just really revive the skin. Haley is using the Biologique Recher Mask Bezolastine. I've never tried this product and again <laughs> I used to do these reviews and I would go line by line in the ingredient deck and kind of evaluate. Now I more so go off of whether a product is professional or intended to be a treatment product. I know a number of very well-respected clinics who use this line and I, I trust them and their results so for me I don't have any problem with this mask especially if she's looking for hydration you don't need to do a mask every day like she said and you probably shouldn't because it can overstimulate the skin but if you like to do a lot of masks I would err on the side of hydrating and calming Haley's mask does have some kale and clay as the second ingredient typically I think of that as more of like a detox pulling out impurities type of ingredient. But again, we can't go based on ingredients individually. It's about how things work as a whole. It also has some seed oils, some vitamin E and glycerin. So overall, probably nice hydrating, nourishing mask and probably a really good one for some makeup prep. Let's see what she does next. Something I like to do to essentially kill two birds with one stone while I'm masking is I'll put on the face mask and then I will grab some eye masks like these. Now, I think it's really interesting that she did her under eye patches over the mask. This is a little technique I actually used to use in the treatment room to help with product penetration. Having that little occlusive layer of something pushing those hydrating ingredients deeper into the skin is really nice. And I, I feel like that was kind of an esthetician move. Maybe Haley's a secret esthetician, but I think that's cool. And it's like a double self-care moment. So I love that for her. I think these eye patches are nice. My favorite brand for under eye patches is definitely Patchology, but to each their own, I don't have a problem with these. To me, it's just more something you would grab that's kind of cute and kind of fun and just like a nice addition to your skincare routine. And again, a nice moment of self-care. I will take a little tool like this. I love facial tools. I'm obsessed with them. 
Give me any facial tool, I'll try anything. But this little gold bar, you turn it on, it, it vibrates, which feels really nice under your eyes. And I'll just go like this, right over the eye mask. Feels so nice. I wish everybody could be feeling what I'm feeling right now. So I'll usually do this for like maybe a minute between both eyes. I really appreciate this step Haley did and I'll tell you why. I think a lot of people are nervous to work in the under eye area and just don't touch it as much because they are concerned touching the eye area will create wrinkles. As long as you have something that gives a little bit of slip and glide, I encourage people to work on the under eye. It is an area that can get really stagnant and just collect a lot of coagulated blood flow. That's why the area up appears dark. It's because that blood is kind of just stagnant and sitting there in a little pool. So anything you can do to get the under eye moving in a way that's gentle, of course, and not a lot of tugging or pulling is beautiful. For my estheticians, I will say, I prefer something such as lymphatic drainage for removing puffiness under the eye. Something that's like physically pushing it out is actually not as effective as if you were to do a lymphatic technique on the under eye area. So it's not necessarily like needing more force under the eye, but it's more so about the technique. But for somebody like Haley, a consumer, somebody who's watching this who doesn't know how to perform lymphatic drainage, I think this is a good option. Sometimes I think people get a little bit hesitant to mess around with the mask because they're worried maybe their significant other is gonna come in and be like, what are you doing to your face? You look insane. It's not me. But A, who cares? B, tell them I that you, you guys don't worry about that. Skin caring. And C, get your significant other into the skincare because then you can do it together and it's more fun. My husband loves to do masks just like I do, so that's a win for me. I usually leave at least the face mask on for like eight to 10 minutes. So now we wait. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to remove my mask now. I'm gonna start with the eye masks. Peel those babies back. Then I'm going to rinse off this mask. I don't necessarily think you have to rinse a mask off with a cleanser. I like to, so there's just nothing excess left on my skin. Kind of little interesting technique there. I feel like Kaylee does have some SD tendencies, but what she actually did in combining the cleanser with the mask is something we call cocktailing as estheticians, mixing products together. I think what she did is great for certain scenarios or for the right person, maybe somebody who's more on the dry side, they want to combine their cream formulas. If you were somebody who was acne prone, I might say it's better to just wash off the mask than go in with your cleanser so it can more fully penetrate. But I think for her and her skin type, this is all good. A lot of the time I wake up and my face feels a little bit swollen, like my lips are really swollen and my eyes will be swollen. I probably eat too much salt, but that's my own bad. So what I like to do is when I'm washing my face in the morning, I give myself a little massage like this, bring the blood flow into my face. Someone's gonna see me doing that and be like, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> okay, now everything's off. I don't dry my face completely when I wash it because I like to apply my serum when it's still a little bit damp. I, Haley has some good instincts when it comes to skincare. This is actually a technique I recommend for some clients, especially if you're not somebody who uses a clean towel every time you wash your face. Sometimes I don't even think there's a need for like rubbing your face dry, especially because it is more beneficial for most serums to penetrate on damp skin. It allows them to just penetrate more deeply and more easily. So I really like that she did that. I am pretty um, intense about like having a fast window between my ending my cleansing and going into my next products, which I do that to preserve the moisture and hydration. So leaving a little bit of that water on your skin before it evaporates through transepidermal water loss is actually a really smart little idea. I am gonna use this really hydrating peptide serum. 
I really, really, really love peptides for the skin. I think that it's one of the best ingredients to use. It's one of my favorite ingredients to use. I love niacinamide, I love peptides, I love hyaluronic acid. Those are all ingredients that I make sure I'm using in my skincare. Okay, I think this is kind of funny. I feel like as consumers, people tend to latch on to like buzzworthy ingredients. And what she's saying is not bad by any means. I think those are great ingredients, but it really depends on the person. For the most part, hyaluronic acid, peptides, those are great for everyone. Hyaluronic acid is going to add moisture and hydration to the skin, which we all need. Peptides help rebuild our skin and its structures. So A plus niacinamide, I think there's a small percentage of people who can't use it. So I would hate for somebody to watch this and just think, oh, niacinamide is great. It's for everyone. I think that kind of happened last year. Like niacinamide became that buzzy skincare word and everybody just wanted it in every product. There can definitely be a thing as too much niacinamide in low concentrations it does help to bring down inflammation but I tend to look between like four to six percent as far as niacinamide and I wouldn't suggest using it in absolutely every product and when you are trying out niacinamide I would suggest slowly easing it into the routine seeing if it works for you and if you notice something is off with your skin you notice irritation from a product with niacinamide it might be the case that it's not for you so i just had to say that as an esthetician it's not always about having favorite ingredients in general it's about finding the best ingredients for you and your skin type and condition i'm gonna do the slightest bit of moisturizer over my serum before i put my spf on i wouldn't typically do this long of a routine in the daytime i would usually just wake up wash my face and maybe like a little bit of serum and SPF, but since I'm preparing for a work day, it's a little bit more than usual. Before I put my SPF on, one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on my face, the tiniest, tiniest bit. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you have oily skin. I always try to be really careful when I'm talking about oils or recommending oils for the skin because it doesn't work for everybody. I love what Haley said about oils not being for everyone because oils are also something that I think has become super trendy and I see a lot of people overusing them. Even a couple years ago, I was guilty of this. It's like we were all using oils literally as much as possible because we just thought that's how you hydrate your skin. There's actually no water in oils. It is just an oil. So it's intended to occlude your moisturizer and your hydration underneath. I also like that she did oil over moisturizer instead of mixing it in. I would, I don't love to use oil in the daytime because I feel it can attract the sun. I would prefer to use it at night, which is when more water evaporates from our skin anyway. If she was feeling super dry and she was going to be wearing makeup and she just wanted that little extra boost for her photo shoot, that's one thing. Um, and I know some people do use oil in the daytime. For me and my clients, I would probably advise against it. But I really love that she made that disclaimer that oil is not for everyone because somebody who's acneic and has enough oil in the skin doesn't necessarily need an oil. So it kind of just depends on the person. But I love that she made that little clarification. Buddy, I'm going to just do this and then I'm going to use a little facial massaging tool all over my face and I need the oil to help a little bit with the moisture and for the tool to glide over my face. Now, this right here is a facial massaging tool that you turn on and it vibrates. I really love this device. I gifted it to a lot of people this year for Christmas just because I think they're fun to try and mess around with. So I'm gonna turn it on, not all the way, like a lower setting and just go in Super amusing, I know, but it actually feels so nice and I clench my teeth really hard at night. So when I wake up in the morning, my jaw is usually kind of sore and like sore in my temples here. So this feels insane. So when I usually do this full, full, full routine, it takes about 
15 to 20 minutes. The thing that is always most important to me when I'm leaving the house every day is washing my face, hydration, and SPF. Obviously you can pick and choose different parts of this routine that you wanna use. You may be watching this and be like, these facial toning devices look absolutely wild and that's not for me and I wouldn't blame you to each their own. Okay, I see more so why she used the oil now. She wanted to do more facial massage. I love that she's all about the facial massage. I feel like many people don't do it enough and it is so important for keeping the skin healthy and keeping things moving and never stagnant and especially if you are concerned with puffiness or fine lines and wrinkles and just wanting stronger skin and um, stronger collagen in general. I think that is absolutely amazing. I think it's incredible. She spends so much time and is so smart and careful about her skin since that is a big component of her job. I am very interested in the Shani Darden tool as well. I enjoy a lot of Shani Darden's um, things. So this little tool might be next on my list of things to try. I think also people, like she said, aren't always into tools and they can be intimidating, but I think they are such a great way to make something like facial massage more easy, more convenient, more doable. I am definitely about my tools. Personally, I love a micro current tool because I think you get a lot of bang for your buck. You get the lifting, you get energy in your cells and you get facial massage but I think um, overall I love that she's using tools for facial massage. My last step of this whole entire routine is going to be my sunscreen. I am very big on SPF. I don't leave the house without it. I don't go to work without it. Even if I'm just working from home and I'm inside the house, the sun rays still hit you through the windows. So my final step is sunscreen. I know there's a lot of debate around how much sunscreen you're supposed to use when you apply it every day. I don't have that answer. I couldn't tell you. I've heard it said that it's one full teaspoon, which sounds like a, a lot of sunscreen to me. The way I do it, and I am so down to be corrected, people can call me out if I'm wrong, but I use like one full pump of sunscreen and then if I feel like I need more in other areas I will add more. Okay I love the sunscreen choice that is actually a favorite of mine it's a really popular sunscreen it is the Elta MD UV clear in the tinted formula I wear this most days out of the week it just provides a little very sheer tint of color it blends out nicely if you were of a darker skin tone you could also wear the sunscreen it is also oil free which I really appreciate especially for my acne prone clients and this sunscreen does have a gentle concentration of niacinamide so if you can't tolerate niacinamide it might be something to think about but otherwise it is a mineral formula and really suited to pretty much all skin types unless you have a particular allergy but I think this is a fantastic choice and a great choice to show you guys because so many people can use it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. There you have it. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave comments below. Make sure to guys. like, subscribe. Hey, that was Haley's routine. I think overall, pretty damn good. We love an educated skincare queen. The only small critiques I could make would be maybe having a little more emphasis on cleansing, although I think she did a decent enough job on it. I just don't know if it would be for everyone to mix the mask and the cleanser. Number two, I would love to see an antioxidant serum in addition to her peptide serum, something such as a vitamin C suited to her skin Type. And then lastly, I don't really love a facial oil for the daytime, especially if you are applying sunscreen so soon after it can potentially be diluted and oil does attract the sun. So that would be something if she were my client, I would probably advise against. That said, I think she used the oil so that she could use her facial massage tools and have some slips. So that I approve of. She was also getting ready for a photo shoot. And I agree, like, if my skin is dry and dehydrated, makeup just doesn't lay as nicely. So maybe she wanted more of a glowy, hydrated base for her photo shoot. So 
I'll let it slide. I'll give her a little exception. Overall, I think this was really great. There was nothing that was super alarming, minus the oil and the sunscreen. I think it's great, especially for Haley's age and where she's at in her career. She has some rebuilding from the peptides in there. She has strengthening from the facial massage. She has hydration from her mask and protection with her sunscreen, which it seems like she's really diligent about. And overall, she puts in the time and the care and invests in quality products. So I really like that about her routine. I think that's all I have to say about Hailey Bieber skincare routine. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if you like this video or if there's somebody's routine you would like me to review next. I feel like I usually have a lot more criticism, but honestly, Haley's was pretty, pretty good. So this was easy. We'll go easy on Haley. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what video you would like to see next, and I will talk to you guys next time. I feel like normally with these videos and reviews I usually have a lot more to critique and to say, and I get confused. I'm like, why'd they do that? What are they doing? But Good job, Haley. That was pretty straightforward and pretty foolproof. So round of applause for Haley. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if there is a video you would like to see next or if there's somebody else's routine you would like me to review. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. I will see you in the next video.